the one word that will describe my style would be resilience. It goes back, man, back to Nigeria, growing up as a kid, not having much. Fetching water, waking up early to go to the farm. My parents were over here, and me and my siblings were back in Nigeria. So it's like, I think that kind of helped me build that toughness, that mental toughness. Family is a big deal there in Africa. They say it takes a village to raise a child. That's really what it is back home. That childhood, I wouldn't have traded for anything else because I could see how it molded my life and made me more of a man. When I first came here to America, I loved going to the library after school. So um, I didn't know they had like an area where you could like watch videos. So those videotapes, I went there, picked out some videotapes, and I saw like the UFC. So I, I started watching it, and um, I saw Anderson Silva, Rampage Jackson, Chuck Liddell, Vitor. It was always on my mind, you know? So I would watch it and go back home to the backyard and start practicing and doing different stuff. I thought I was freaking Addison Silva, but it sparked my interest. So I was like, damn, I could do that. And an elbow after that. Come on to that. Come in. He walked into my gym, uh, 20 years old. Walked in, this big, giant kid. A little uncoordinated, a little unbalanced with this sweet little five-foot woman next to him, which was his mom. And uh, she approached me quietly and she said, this is my son, you know, see what he can do. My mom always knew that I had something, I had that fight in me. She always saw me watching it or either reading books about it, and um, she told me to just go for it. We started from, from zero, you know, he'd never thrown a punch, never thrown a kick. You know, and he was really, really new to the sport in every single way. Get up, go, don't let him up, Kennedy. Posture, Kennedy, posture. Nice pass. She told me got beat it. She told me got tossed around, but um, she knew I was, I was gonna be resilient enough to keep up, keep on with the sport. I started practicing with the pros after the second day, and um, I kept learning, kept grasping more knowledge about the game. Up top, damage right here, damage. I just fell in love with the sport, so I kept on doing it. You know, his mom was always there every single day. Watch him in practice, smiling. Let's go, guys, get to work. I thought everything was fine, and then one day she just didn't show up. And I didn't say anything, and then the next week came, and the next week came, and, and she wasn't present. So finally I said, hey, where's your mom? And he said, well, coach, my mom is sick. She has ALS. In 2014, I realized my mom was having shoulder pain. So it was like, it was like sharp pain. I didn't really think much about it, but um, I thought it was just a minor pain. But um, then it, it, it kind of progressed where she can't lift her hands above her shoulders. And I was kind of worried about it. And uh, I told her to like get it checked to go see a doctor. So she went, got diagnosed, and it was ALS. So I did some research and I saw it was a, a muscle debilitating illness. I thought it was some minor illness that has a cure. But um, when I looked into it, it didn't really have a cure, so it kind of hit me. I was distraught, I was depressed, you know. Once the illness started to progress, my dad just didn't want anything to do with that. He wasn't supportive, so um, that was the time when I decided to like pick up where he left off, you know, and just help provide for my mom. So um, I decided for her to move out. I picked up two jobs, you know, and with the little money I saved, and I moved to an apartment, and we stayed there and just had her away from him so she could have that relief, you know? I don't see it as a burden. I owe it to her because she brought me in this life. I just see it as a responsibility as a son. He does a lot. He's like a, a father figure here. And that father figure, he does everything. Cooking, cleaning, going to grocery, you know, cleaning the house, everything. He does everything. He takes care of 
after the bereavement there, his older brothers and his uh, younger sister. He does a lot. I'm very grateful that I have a son like him. His mom is in a state where, you know, he needs to take care of her 24-7. He's kind of taken that role as a caregiver, even though he's got, you know, multiple siblings, he's the guy. There was a pain in his eyes that we could all see. But no matter what, nobody could put themselves in Kennedy's shoes, dealing with that kind of pain, watching his mom deteriorate. There was a point where our goal was just to get him to fight in the UFC before she passed away. A welcome to the Contender Series, Kennedy Zajuku, 26 years old now, a native of Nigeria. The Contender Series changed Kennedy's life. He was 3-0 when he fought a contender. And, you know, he just had a lot of raw ability. You know, I mean, he's got an 83-inch reach. Uh, he never gets tired. He had all these intangibles. I always, you know, pushed for him. I always told the UFC, I think this kid was, really can be something. I think he can be great. He is a humongous guy for light heavyweight. Using that leg. There it is. Head kick there. Brian is down. It's a Chukwu with the hammer fist. Brian covering up. Yeah, that's Kennedy's it. a Chukwu. A win in emphatic knockout fashion. We are in desperate need of light heavyweights. How do you not take Kennedy? And then White signed me, and I took it. It took the contract. So um, thank God, because um, I really wanted to raise money for my mom to get some treatment. His first fight in the UFC, Kennedy fought Paul Craig. Kennedy actually beat him the whole fight. He got caught in a triangle choke, and then he tapped. His next fight, he ended up winning. For the winner, by you know and by the third fight, he seemed determined, you know, to show the UFC and, and the world what he was capable of. You know, Albert was a big favorite. All eyes were on him. There seems to be a significant speed difference. Whoa! Allberg is much more active. But Kennedy's not going anywhere. I mean, he's so durable. Seeing Zechiku fight with a lot of pressure. You know, Kennedy ruined that party. Oh! Huge oh, fight from Zechiku! Kennedy and Zechiku has knocked out Carlos Albert! It is a lot of pressure, and I think he let that on Albert's chin with that right hook, you know, just all the stuff he's been through. And I think there's kind of been a release there for him. Incredible. Crazy performance by Kennedy. Well fight. Each fight that goes on, I kind of see that me getting more experience and being able to like stay calm, you know. God's time is always the best. So if it's his will for me to be a champion, then it will happen. Kennedy, African Savage, and Shakiku. You know, when you deal with that kind of adversity in life, um, it toughens you up. And I think uh, through that process and that journey, um, he's become not only a better man and a better teammate, but also a better fighter. The night of the fight, he got a new contract. Dana was came backstage and was like, man, unbelievable fight, right? Gave him the bonus, gave him a hug. <laughs> What a badass fight. Thank you for the opportunity, sir. It was kind of just a vindication for everything we'd been through and, you know, for him to finally start making that kind of money to change his family's situation is huge. And all the things that, you know, other people could say, hey, you know, this ruined me. Hey, I didn't have a chance. Hey, I, I never had a shot. The odds were stacked against me. He took those odds and flipped them around and, and worked through all those things. And, and I respect him for that. I'm really grateful for the stuff God has put me through. And, um, even though it's not the best thing for mom to be in that illness, but it has taught me a lot about growing as a man. Because everything's for a reason, you know, and God puts everything in your life for a reason. So I think that's helped me to push harder, grind harder, and have that more drive to like be, be victorious in what I do. It always makes it different when you don't give up. <laughs>